Hey, how's it going? Justin here with Redis. Just want to take a quick moment of your time to show you how to set up a cluster in Redis. Now I'm just using a vanilla version of Redis 6, nothing special, and I'm just going to set it up in the terminal. And I'm not going to do any kind of major testing or anything like that. This is supposed to be a quick video just to set you up and get you up and running. This is a portion of an exercise that is within RU301, running Redis at scale. That's a course that we offer at Redis University that covers high availability, high durability, scalability, and extra monitoring that you can run while you're trying to set up a production level Redis instance. Okay? Okay, cool. So let's get started. So I am here uh, in my terminal. I'm just creating a little folder called clustering just so I can set up my little sandbox. And I'm going to create a redis.conf file that I'm going to use as a template uh, for all these other conf files I'm going to be creating. So you'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit. But here, let's start with redis.conf. And I apologize, I have a very clacky um, keyboard right now because my trusty keyboard is broken, so I'm waiting for a replacement. So I have a very loud mechanical keyboard, so I apologize. So I'm going to start with port 7000. That's going to be our first instance of a node. And then I'm going to set cluster enabled yes. This is telling our Redis uh, server instance that it's going to be set up for a cluster configuration. Uh, cluster config file nodes.conf. So this is going to be a standard uh, configuration file for the clustering. Uh, we don't actually have to touch this within this video. Um, I'm just stating what the file name is going to be. And then cluster node timeout, oops, timeout 5000. That's 5000 milliseconds until this cluster will be considered a fail, or this node will be considered a fail. Um, so if it cannot be reached within 5000 milliseconds, then we're going to trigger a failover. And um, basically, that's going to replace this uh, node with another one. Uh, if it was a primary, then we'll take another replica and turn it into a primary and so forth. So lastly, I'm going to set the uh, replication to append only. So I'm sorry, uh, the backup. So uh, we're going to create a append only file uh, as we enter data into this uh, node. Cool. So save this and we're good to go. So now we have a redis.conf file that we're going to be copying and slightly altering into set, no, eight, eight different folders, uh, because one folder for every single Redis node instance. 7,005, 7,006, 7,007. Okay, cool. Now, um, I will speed this up in post, but for now, but what I want you to do is copy this redis.conf file to every single folder <laughs> um, because we're going to be adding them. So boop, there we go. So now do that from 7,000 all the way to 7,007. And then let's meet back up. OK, so now I've copied this redis.conf file to all of my different folders. So each node instance will have their own redis.conf file. Now we need to actually alter every single redis.conf file to match the port that it's going to be uh, assigned to. So uh, let's do, let's see here, vim 7001 redis.conf. I'm going to be setting this to 7001. And you guessed it, I'm going to be doing the exact same thing to every other uh, redis.conf file within every single folder. So I'll speed up and let's meet up when we're done. Okay, so now we have a copy of redis.conf in every single folder. And within that redis.conf file, the port number is mapped properly. So within the 7007 folder, the redis.conf port is going to point to 7007. Cool. So now let's have, let's have some even more fun. Let's go into every single folder 
and then start the server with the local redis.conf file. Now watch this. Okay, so do you see where it says running in cluster mode? That's great. That means that our redis.conf file is being intercepted and ran. Also, port 7000. I told it to run in port 7000, so it is running in port 7000. All right, but there's more. We're going to be doing this for every single node that we have. So let's go to the 7001 folder and let's start the Redis server there. Now we're going to do this for every single one. So I'm just going to speed this up and you can meet me afterwards. Okay, so now we have eight different servers running from port 7000 all the way to port 7007. Next, we want to actually connect them all together. So to do that, I'm going to do redis-cli. I'm going to call the cluster subcommand suite. I'm going to call create. So this is going to take all of the different IP addresses um, and like uh, basically the hosts and the port numbers of every single Redis instance that I want to connect, and it's going to bring them all together. So I'm just going to copy paste every single one that I just happen to have right over here. There we go. Eh, it looks a little nasty, but whatever. And then I'm going to call cluster replicas one. Now this means that for every single primary that we're gonna have, I want to actually create one replica. So if I wanted, say, two replicas per primary, I would just change that to two. So I'm happy with one, and there we go. All right, so let's check out all this information here. So the first four lines, the begin with M, those, going to be our, those are gonna be our primaries. Uh, let's break down some of the information that they're giving us for every primary shard. First, it's going to give us a hash of that specific shard. Then it's going to give us the host and port number. So the first one's going to be um, our 7,000. And then after that, um, it's going to say slots. And then in brackets, 0 to 4,095. Those are going to be our hash slots. That's going to be the location that is going to be assigned to that shard. Now I'm going to talk about hash slots and hash keys in a later video, but this is really cool. This allows us to reshard our keys um, higher or lower um, without having to worry about the um, quantity of shards. So we're not actually distributing keys via shard number. We're doing it with these hash slots, and that's really cool. But I'll talk about that later. I'm just getting way ahead. So you see after that slots 0 through 4,095, it's giving us an actual quantity of uh, slots that are within that shard, and we see 4,096. So that's going on for the top four primary shards. After that, with the replica shards, let's look at the first one. It's going to give us its own hash, and then it's going to give us its host and port number. So the first replica is going to be 7,004. That's the port. And then it's going to say replicates, and it's going to give us a hash of the primary that it's replicating. So I see here that it's uh, replicating a uh, hash ending in 68F7A. So that's going to be actually replicating the first primary shard. So that makes sense. So I see it at the bottom. It says, can I set the above configuration? Well, sure you can, buddy. All right. It's doing some mathematics. All right. All nodes agree about slots configuration. That's fantastic. When the nodes agree, I agree. So it says all 16,384 slots are covered. That's the amount of hash slots assigned to any Redis cluster instance. Um, let me actually try to jump in and see if I can play with it. So redis-cli-p, uh, I'll connect to uh, the first primary 7,000. And I'm going to cluster mode of dash C. And there we go, Redis cloud colon 7,000. That's good to know. Let me just. Do a ping, a pong. Let me check out, this is my favorite command, cluster slots. This will give me all the information uh, relevant to my cluster. So let's see here. I can see the first cluster uh, covers 7,000 is the primary, 7,004 is the replica like we just saw earlier. And then it goes from zero to 4,095. And then these are all just based off of what hits first. So the, these top numbers, one and two and three and four, those aren't in any, any particular order. So let's look up um, from 
zero. Let's see here, zero to 4,095. The next one in sequence will be 4,096 to 8,195. And that's going to be, uh, for the primary, the port ending in 7,001, and its replica is 7,007. So we can see all the different information that's going on uh, with this cluster slots command. I really like it. We can also do the cluster info command. And this will just give us some top level information about our cluster. So how many messages sent, received, uh, cluster size, known nodes, any failures, um, just making sure that we have enough uh, slots in there and that everything's okay. Um, and, you know, as always, set foo bar. It's great. It still works. It's still a database. So that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so we just set up a Redis cluster. You can do many different things with this. It's pretty endless. Uh, this is a baby cluster, so I would never actually create an even number of nodes within a cluster. If you see my video on clustering in Redis, we'll find out why. It's basically the split brain situation, which is not good. Um, so yeah, if you like this, if you want to learn more, take our RU301 running Redis at scale class. It's really cool. Um, I talk a lot on it. There's a lot of readings. There's a lot of hands-on exercises where you actually build a lot of these out. And in the end, you'll have a great skill set of how to set up um, you know, a Redis instance for production. That includes high durability, high scalability, uh, high compatibility. I just so many great things. It's a really, really great course. I highly urge you to check it out. Um, and if you ever have any questions, add a comment in the bottom of this video. Also, feel free to go into our Discord channel um, or just send me an email or tweet and just you know let me know what you want to see. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Yeah.